a charging question. The A stands for acid, and since acid has a means to the proton, and the proton is positively charged, and we remove the proton, what's left? That's the backbone. So DNA, sh uh, both DNA and RNA should be negatively charged. Um, number four. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's a phosphate group. Because the oxygen, yeah. uh, not food. Uh, uh, number five. Uh, this is a, a bit of longer question. Rank the following structure based on the level of complexity. Six is the most complex. One is the least one. Well, how do you basically we pick the lower one first? Yeah. This one should be nucleotide one. DNA is two. Nucleosome. Nucleosome. Nucleosome should be the organization of DNA. You usually I forgot the two hundred base or one hundred fifty. How long is nucleosome? The average nucleosome size. Uh, okay, okay, let's pick three, and then uh, chromatin and chromosome. Chromatin. And chromosome. Okay. Uh, five. Genome is six. Check. Okay, good. Dr. Yes. Can you talk? I'm sorry. Can you talk about really quickly the difference between the nucleosome and the chromatin? Uh huh. The difference between nucleosome. Nucleosome have to have a histone. Okay. Nucle uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, The nucleosome is a basic unit. A nu nucleosome is a here. Yeah. A nucleosome is a, the basic unit of organization. Is it? Yeah. So nu nucleosome is basically a histidine with DNA strand uh, wrapping around it. So it's uh, the unit of Imagine those are DNA strands. Right. So those are uh, each one of this is a histone. So I'm going to wrap around this. That's this unit is called nucleosome. Okay. So I'm going to wrap again. Uh, uh, now I have two nucleosomes. Which is chromosome. Right. Yeah. So I wrap. So all the chromosomes going to organize this way. So, uh, but you got that idea. The those basic unit like this is called a nucleus. A nucleus, and yeah. then the when you put them two like that and then coil those, that's the chromatin. Yeah, you have no all the chromatin in the entire length of chromatin is organized like this. Right. The histone. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. You just the entire yeah. chromatin is going to have all these chromatin. Yeah. And then the chromatin more. Yeah, you have a, a long. A lot. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. thank you. So each chromosome, uh, each nucleus on average, uh, there is a ladder. You, you, so, so if if you picture this, so you have an enzyme to cut the DNA, but you cannot 
you, the only thing that cut the DNA in this loose uh, 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 open region. Mm -hmm. right, so then you're going to cut the DNA based on the average size of the nucleus. Mm -hmm. Then you can actually cut it around until you will see a ladder. Mm -hmm. And that's every, the, the average gap between them is the average size of the nucleus. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, I forgot the, it looks like it's a, uh, my memory says 150 or 200 something. It's, it's somewhere in that range. Yeah. So that's the average length of a DNA wrapping around a nucleus on space out. Yeah. But uh, high or the, the average size of nucleus on. Well, how about I leave that a question next time. Uh, Jasmine and Emmanuel, you're going to answer what's the average size of nucleus on? <laughs> Found out the actual answer. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm just dedicating my problem to the student. <laughs> okay, so number six. Uh, uh, number six, 70% got it correct. Uh, the helical. The two nuclear backmark closer to each, other, to each other in the minor group. It should be the minor group. Okay. Uh, unit protein can bind DNA by interacting with natural base exposed in the major group. Okay. Yeah. So and if, if you if you recall from last semester from the last class, the major if you wrapping the DNA of a oh, that's like the left hand right? DNA for the <laughs> But so the the major group will be those between the looping yeah, this is a major group. That's the protein you will find. The minor group going to be inside of the, the, the two binding strands. If some, some something have to bind it to minor group, needs, they have to separate the two double helix mm -hmm. and then find the minor group. That's more difficult. At least cost more energy. Yeah. 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 Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well. Uh, yeah, I will re offer it. So, but it's going to close out, so you don't wor have to work on it uh, in class now. I will open it after the class. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But it will be due, say, by end of the day. Right? So you have to work on it immediately after the class, mm -hmm. and it will be closed soon. Uh, uh, let me do a preview again. Uh, number seven. I don't have to go over every one of them, I guess. Yeah, match the enzyme. I'm going to let you do the number seven. This one you better have to read the, the book of what's really and find out. So number seven is basically a recall question. Yeah, so I'm going to skip number seven. Identify source of energy. That's also a, just a recall. Right? If you just look at the slides of the book, it's going to tell you we, what and then uh, what source of energy you're going to use. So it's not much. The uh, polymerase uh, match the function. This is also a recall. So so this basically you have to read read the book and kind of find out. Now this one is interesting. Okay, so. Which is the complement DNA strand to phi ATTT DNA? This is this one actually takes some uh, thinking to find out. So uh, this is number ten. Actually, wow, well, a hundred percent correct. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> all right. So I guess I don't have to do this since it's hundred percent correct. Okay, let's skip. Well, the basic idea is uh, so first. Uh, 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 you have to find what well, the rule is ATCG, so you have to find ATCG and then you have to uh, know the, the direction on the strand. So if it's 5 to 3, once you 
make a TA8, that's a three prime, three prime to the left, and then go to the right prime. And you look about the question, make sure, if the question flip it, the five prime to three prime, make sure you pick, the, pick that one as well. Okay, but it looks like at least from the pe five people submitted, uh, I see 100% correct, so. Okay, let's number 11. I mean, eleven sixty percent correct. Uh huh. Okay, let's see what's this one. Which of the following double strain molecules require more energy to separate? Oh, I see. Uh, this one basically you have to count which one has more GC pair, because the GC pair has three hydrogen bond and AT pair has two hydrogen bond, so the GC pair is more stable than the AT pair. So basically, the GC pair is going to have three hydrogen bond like this. The AT pair has just two bonds, like this. and uh, you have you have three bonds to be small, sturdy than the two one. Right? So you count the GC one that's going to be more uh, take it take more energy to separate the three. Right? That's, that's the basic idea. These are the AT, these are the AT pair takes two has two hydrogen bonds. Okay. Yeah, the so GC we have three hydrogen bonds. Bond. So the three hydrogen bond one is more of sturdy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Now you look at the uh, question C, which one has more G and C? And that's the one going to uh, be the most uh, stable. Okay. Yeah. So you just have to take a pen, count how many GC. Although there is another way, uh, if you just copy paste of those, uh, <laughs> and then uh, you go to our uh, class software, say APE. I'm going to open up the APE. Uh, so that's just uh, if you don't. Well, <laughs> it depends on how the exam is given. If the exam is given, say closed book, you don't have to cannot use everything. Well, you just grind your teeth and count A, D, C, D, right? If it's say a bioinformatics exam, you can just uh <coughs> right. So <coughs> I copy there and let's see. There should be a nucleotide content somewhere. <coughs> feature <coughs> wait a minute I, I'm not seeing it right here so circular Okay, I forgot the way is the uh, ATCD content one. <coughs> uh, sorry, I guess this tried to impress you but didn't work out. <laughs> so, uh, I had to use a different tool to do this. Okay. Uh, sometimes you can also use Microsoft Word to do it. You just found A if you want to. This is very short, you can just count it by hand again, right? Uh, number 12, uh, let me see, number 12, 60% correct. Okay, let's look at number 12. Particular double-strand DNA molecule content, 20% of A. Ah, I see. Who, who, who wants to volunteer come to the board to work on this? Uh, you already did this one, <laughs> Jasmine? Okay. It's your turn to <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, let's. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, let me take a picture of this, and then you can erase all of it. So gorgeous. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, So we know that we need to get to a hundred. 
So we have 60% left. And then um, I separated that. So we had, we need 60% left between T, I mean between G and C. So then I did 30% G and 30% C. So whichever one of those, I think it was 30% G. G, yeah. So I probably didn't need to write that. All right, yeah. very good, thank okay. you. Okay, so that's number 12, and I'm assuming, well, that's just a concept, you just have to read the book and find it. Well, if you think, well, if you think about it, it's actually quite uh, straightforward. I mean, the DNA is naturally charged, and the histone is something DNA is going to bind. Yeah. And you have to stabilize the DNA, so you have to have the opposite charge. The, po the point is, histone comes back to have the opposite charge of the DNA. Otherwise, it's not going to be stable. So, so, so the negative and negative positive are going to be formed. So, we have each other. So, the, the positive and negative are going to bind to that side. So, it's, it's going to have to be formed. Uh, <coughs> okay, the BDNA is my common form. The BDNA is the. Well, it's at the right hand. Okay, yeah. so uh, the mechanism of DNA replication is uh, that's one of the main concepts. It, it is semi conservative. Yeah, so, uh, bacteria. Da, 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 da. Ah, this is an interesting question. Number 16. Oh, 80% correct. That's actually quite impressive. Uh, That's uh, that should be one of the book. Uh, yeah, the yeah, experiment in the book. Yeah. Like now bacteria grow in heavy medium and then transfer. Uh, let me see whether I can find the slides. Yeah, that's basically this experiment. So. so you have the bacteria growing heavy medium and then transfer to light medium. So the nitro 15 is heavier, nitro. And then nitro 14, that's the standard. Right. So that's a light medium and then isolate DNA. Uh, so first gener the initially it should be heavy, mm -hmm. and after another generation, it's after one a uh, sec two more generation, the heavy strand and the light strand are uh, as uh, um, are mixed. Uh, there will be half heavy. Wait a minute. Oh, this is the uh, uh, initially the uh, heavy strand. And then, uh, uh, sorry, after one generation, it's a uh, half heavy, half, uh, half, uh, half, hi half heavy, half a light, so it's in the middle. Uh, and then over time, it, this, but this one will always stay, but uh, the light one going to have more and more. Uh, the idea is basically this, right? So, so basically, you have a three mode uh, hypothesis. The, this is also also the uh, something we call a hypothesis driven research, right? We have a problem, so we want to say how how do we know how the DNA replication uh, mechanism is, and the possibility the if we can think of uh, will be a three scenario: one A, B, C. So we can either have a semi-conservative 
the A or B, which is completely conservative, or C is kind of a mixing. Right? So we have a right. So we have these three model. How do we possibility? How do we do an experiment to distinguish these three possibilities? That's basically. It. And so we did this experiment. We grow the bacteria in a heavy strain, and then let them grow for more one or more generation in a common uh, normal media and then we look at the how the DNA strain are labeled so initially it's going to pretty uh, a strong uh, now the okay here's a why why we don't see the one band initially because when we use the heavy isotope labeling it's not a hundred percent perfect there are something that's not labeled right? especially the bacteria for for bacteria to be labeled, it has to go through replication to be labeled. Uh, some bacteria may just hibernating there, uh, so, so there are some bacteria is in the G zero phase. Right? You have cell cycle, then you also have the cell do not go through cell cycle and doesn't replicate the DNA. So those bacteria we cannot label them; it's just hibernating. So so, but then when we isolate the cell, we still see their DNA. So so you can, so even though Ideally, we should see a single band, but in reality, it's not 100% perfect. So we still see a second band here. That's the so and there's also another uh, situation here. Maybe the strain has, uh, even though w w when we isolate the bacteria, maybe the bacteria also start to grow again. Once they grow, start to grow again, and we have removed them from the heavy uh, uh, natural media and then it's going to have a lighter one so so that's in in, in all kind of situation you're going to have some uh you're not going to be 100 percent one band <coughs> so anyhow but after we grow it for one more gen this is that i'm uh, i'm uh, uh, uh incredibly impressed that's a single strong band i'm not sure <laughs> but sometimes you do see a very good result so if you see a single band what does that mean in if you go back to the hypothesis, it basically it cannot be the completely conserved. This one has to be gone, right? Because this one, it just never gave you a single band. In the second, the, if you want to see a single band, it has to be the A, semi-conserved here, or the B, the mixing one. The, the second one is basically cannot be correct, right? So, so and then we go back to the second generation, we start to see uh, a lighter band, which is the completely unlabeled one. And then that means the, the third possibility cannot be correct. Yeah. So the third possibility basically means, well, firstly, mixing, mixing them is 50-50. But over time, it always has something there. It's not going to be completely clean. This one, if you're always mixing them, it's not after the third generation. Only the the top one, the semi conservative one, going to after the third generation, you are going to see the clean unlabeled strain. Making sense? So the so after the third generation, you see a lighter band, unlabeled DNA. That means this one cannot be correct. The third one cannot be correct. So it's basically elimination process, and then we well, yes. So, but what you, uh, I guess if you if you just look at the heavy chain, it doesn't it look like the all the part, all the uh, scenario going to lead to the disappearance of the heavy chain. So that way is it's basically not a useful information. But if we if you look at the half heavy and the lighter chain, and then you can distinguish that three hypotheses. That's the process of elimination, I guess. Okay, and um, well, you then you just try to select a one not making sense here. So, uh, doing the replicate. Okay, number seventeen. Let me see. Seventeen, eighty percent. Okay, seventeen. Oh. This actually is, is a recall, I'm going to let you, it's basically a recall question, so there's really not much explained. 
how many replication forks are there at the origin of replication? How many replication forks at the origin? Uh, actually, this question, let me see. Okay, two is correct. Uh, I forgot the fork definition. Uh, I guess you had to con contain another one. Uh, okay, but it's also a recall question. Uh, doing a replication, what are you in production on Oh, I see. So this is also a recall question. 19. The rest of the question, you seem, most of you seem to get it. Uh, 17, 19. Oh, 19 actually only 70%. Uh, well, uh, I think this one should be Okazaki uh, fragment, the lagging strain. Yeah, that's the Okazaki fragment. Uh, 20, 75%. Uh, all of the following are critical except Should be DNA like it. DNA like it should also be. DNA like it. Okay, it is DNA. Okay. Uh, 21. Uh, during DNA replication, which of following organisms have the fewest origin of replication per cell? Oh, uh, that's basically a recall. Actually, I don't remember the correct answer of this one. Uh, fewest replication per cell. What's the answer? Bacteria. Bacteria? Huh, why is it bacteria? Uh, Oh, you can have one replication <laughs> origin, so that's right. <laughs> it has to be the, yeah. So that has to be the fewer. It cannot be fewer than one, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So, okay, number 22 replication. Which enzyme responsible for joining? Uh, it should be like this, is it? Yeah, but it's not part of. Oh, I see. This one is uh, on the leading string, except. Okay, that's why. Right. Okay, so. Let me stop the recording here. Uh,